Hi, I'm Greg Watson and welcome to Property Matters, the show where we talk all things property and lots happening here in the Marawatu now that Level 3 lockdown has begun, which gives us a little bit more freedom in the real estate side of things. We talk all things property here and we're going to get into some of the news that's happening in Marawatu Wanganui that may be of interest to you. From there, we're going to talk a little bit about what the change in restrictions might mean for the real estate market, a little bit about house prices and so forth, and which celebrities have been spending massive amounts of money on housing. And from there, we might even have a little bit of time, we would hope, to squeeze in some talk about landlording and renting as well. So let's get into it with some uh, local news. The Wanganui Council has approved a residential expansion west of Springvale. So the City Council has adopted the recommendations of independent commissioners to create this new housing growth area west of Springvale. Uh, Wanganui, of course, has been very popular due to the low house prices and people moving there. In fact, last year it was voted uh, New Zealand's most beautiful town. And so this has allowed me, Hamish McDowell says, the proposal of the purpose of the plan changes to meet projected housing demand for land right out to 2065. So the adoption of the structure plan also coincides with the construction of the Fitzherbert Avenue extension linking Springvale with Moston Road, with work likely to start in December this year. Um, prices in Wanganui have been quite stunning in terms of the increases they've had over the last 12 or 24 months. And in fact, I recently read that around about $100,000 of equity uh, has occurred to the median, median house price in the last 12 months. So really uh, going along pretty well there in terms of the Wanganui side of things. Having a look now, uh, next headline, Wellington homes sold under coronavirus lockdown with no viewings. And this happened, Wellington homes sold during lockdown level four uh, due to just the ability of uh, property companies to be able to show properties with regards to virtual tours, uh, with regards to photography and so forth. Now this actually happened also to a home in Hayden Street in Palmerston North, uh, Watson Real Estate, sold a property. Um, they had three buy three offers simply from a virtual tour, 3D tour, um, and that sold with an excellent price. So real estate didn't stop completely during level four, but now it's going to continue uh, somewhat and pick up again now that level three is underway. This article from Radio New Zealand, Caution Advice for Investors Eyeing Property Market. Property investor says property shortages are likely if the economy goes into recession because of the COVID-19 crisis. This is a property commentator, Ashley Church. He says less people will go to properties amid, amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the Real Estate Institute, since this article was written, has come out with some guidelines that should keep everybody safe, but we'll talk more about that later. In this article, it says some economists are predicting a price drop of up to 15% over next year, while turnover could fall by about a fifth. And Ollie Newland said, people simply will not sell unless they have to, because people do not like taking losses, and it will only be the most pressed people who will sell in this market. He says it's normally divorce or death or bank pressure that forces people to sell, and that's a very small part of the market. He did say, though, it could be risking risky investing in an uncertain market. Now I must say that this article is based around the larger centres rather than the regions which are going very strong. So he says there may be more shocks to come, hopefully not, but I'd be cautious about investing unless you've got very large equity and can afford to lose. Well that's uh, his opinion. I'd say if you're purchasing a property in Manawatu Wanganui that the market is going to go exceptionally well in the next few years. That's not spin, that's based on analysis. So under level three, open homes are not allowed, but private viewings are. We'll talk a bit more about that later. And uh, of course, you can't go to property of somebody who's self-isolating. So here's another article, and this is uh, Tony Alexander, uh, who talks about, here's why house prices may not fall as far as you'd expect. Again, just to reiterate my personal opinion, prices in Manawatu, Wanganui will not fall. Um, and they'll just simply keep rising. But anyway, this says that his, this says in this article, history tells us that when a recession comes along, people tend to get overly pessimistic about house prices and forget the supportive and insulating factors. 
Here are a few that won't stop prices easing off, but they will stem the magnitude of declines and set the scene for recovery next year. Note, however, that from loca one location to another, conditions will be different. And two big themes to keep in mind for the coming years are these. Firstly, tourism locations will suffer the most because of four factors. The absence of foreign tourists and their only slow return one day, the moving out of many migrant workers and Kiwis, selling by business owners who need funds to support their businesses, and the absence of fresh buying by such people until our economy is in much better shape. So Tony Alexander rightfully says that tourist areas will have an impact. There's no doubt in my mind about that. This next opinion I don't agree with, but he says that investors will pull back to the cities from the regions. The likely removal of loan to value restrictions means they don't need to go to the countryside to find property for which their money adds up to at least 30% deposit. And while he's correct, they won't get the capital gains in the big cities that they will in the regions. So it depends on what the, uh, certainly not for the next um, sh short to medium period. So he talks a, a little bit about uh, price, price, uh, uh, pr prices in terms of Auckland and says that they're likely to stay low for th three to five years. I beg your pardon, he's talking about the interest rates here, but it's staying low for three to five years. And the low rates have improved affordability for owner occupiers like first home buyers and also encourage investors away from term deposits like shares and property. So he's certainly got uh, a valid point there that the interest rates are very low. That's what's really going to help us here in the Manawatu. two. Uh, I was looking at a uh, fixed term rate just on Friday, a 3.09, unbelievably cheap to borrow money. And considering that the market here, in my opinion, sales market value should go up by at least 10% a year for the next three years um, cumulatively, then really that's um, a great, uh, great time to buy property in Manawatu, Wanganui. So talking about uh, Tony Alexander's article, and this article from the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand, uh, what he was referring to there was uh, becoming easier to lend money. So this here's the headline, REINZ welcomes Reserve Bank announcements re-temporary removal of LVRs. What a lot of acronyms in one sentence. LVRs are the loan to value ratios, and this affects the size of the deposit that people can buy. So Bindi Norwell, the chief executive of the Real Estate Institute says, since LVRs were introduced in 2013, first home buyers have found it extremely difficult to save a 20% deposit, especially as house prices have continued to rise significantly over the last seven years. Many first home buyers report having to save for years in order to reach that threshold. And when you're talking about places such as Auckland, it can take in excess of 15 years for a couple on an average salary to save a 20% deposit. She says first time buyers have found themselves in a really difficult situation during COVID-19 with the portion of their KiwiSaver fund able to be used for a first home purchase being at much lower value than many had expected. Therefore, the proposal by the Reserve Bank to remove LVRs, albeit for a limited period of time, will go a long way towards helping first home buyers get into the market. Now, if they do that, that's going to make Manawatu Wanganui go crazy busy. Now, it's just a proposal. Interesting to note that the Reserve Bank's proposal doesn't appear to make any distinction between first home buyers, own occupiers or investors. And this is welcome news as COVID-19 is negatively impacting so many people from a financial perspective around the country, points out Bindi, Bindi Norwell. As always, we'd re remind people to take a prudent approach to any borrowing to ensure they're not over leveraged in the long term, she says. So some good advice there uh, around the state of the market. Again, uh, Tony Alexander was also quoted in good returns as saying that uh, the, the house price drops will be short lived. So there are, there are uh, forecasts of 10 to 15 percent price drop. Um, and again, this is based around your larger centres, but even if it wasn't, remember properties in Manawatu, Wanganui have gone up uh, well over 20% in the last year alone. So nothing too major to worry about, but just headlines that sound scary. So this article says that previous recessions indicate house prices fall at the same time GDP declines and start rising in as the economy starts uh, growing. New Zealand came out of the 1998 recession in the second quarter and prices began to increase in the final three months of that year. In the GFC, the economy started growing again in the third quarter of 2008, with house prices rising in the first quarter of 2009. 
So Tony Alexander believes that the data indicates New Zealand's property market will recover relatively quickly from the current COVID crisis. He says periods of price decline are rare and they are short lived. Opportunities to buy in a weak market don't last long. He expects that there will be reports of some big price declines and they will not represent the true picture for the relevant markets overall. So again, that's something uh, nice to know. And here in the Manawatu Wanganui, remember there's a lot of projects going on. Um, the Levin Otaki Bypass Road's back on the agenda. Uh, there's movements coming into Levin and Ohakia. There's a Kiwi Rail Rail Hub, which has got the green light. There's the road uh, going over the hills to the east coast being built. It's a Turutia wind farm. Um, there's expansions of uh, a $50 million expansion of Fonterra. So much happening here that uh, people will just stream into this area and house prices will remain strong. But because of the uh, national way of looking at things, this article from interest.co.nz says strong house price growth meant residential rental yields were falling for the, in the first three months of the year and then along came coronavirus. So Greg Ninnis in this article says that uh, the lower quartile selling prices for the three bedroom homes in 56 locations around the country where there's a high level of rental activity uh, and compares that with median rents for three bedroom houses in the same area. So therefore working out the rate of return for investors or the gross returns anyway, uh, indicating whether returns are rising or falling and the relative attractiveness of residential rental property compared to other types of investments. They do a lot of analysis on this. They say that in the six months to March, prices increased in 49 of the districts monitored compared to the six months to December last year, declined in four and were unchanged in three. The period from December to March is usually the busiest time of year for the residential rental market and usually records, records some of the biggest rent increases, but rents rose in just 37 districts, declined in seven and were unchanged in 16 compared to the six months to December. So the indicative yields, and these are gross yields, remember, uh, in Auckland range from 3.4% to 4.7. Uh, the best yields in the country were Ashburton with 7.3, followed by Wanganui, yay, at 7, and Holden's Bay, Napuna, and Rotorua at 6.8. So um, the, the yields, of course, being the trade-off between uh, buying a house and uh, the amount of rent that you can get. Uh, but, so therefore, uh, still very good in, in Manawatu, Wanganui in general. So moving along now to some um, more international news. Our Sir John Key buys Waterfront Sydney pad and lists it the next day. And this is on stuff.co.nz. So this is a little bit of property trading going on here. So John Key has settled on a North Shore Sydney apartment last week, but it's immediately back on the market. So uh, the former Prime Minister, Sir John Key, and his wife, Lady Broner, became Sydney's newest high-end homeowners in this past week when they took possession of a $6.05 million harbourside apartment in McMahon's Point. But the Auckland-based couple are not expecting to take up residence in the 129 square metre pad, despite having already waited three years for it to be complete since buying it off the plan. No sooner did Lady Broner settle on her new three-bedroom home than Ray White, Lower North Shore agents Tim Abbott and David Gillen have put it back up for grabs, this time for the 2020 price of $6.5 to $7 million. So Sir John made the shock decision to quit New Zealand's top job in politics altogether in 2016. And the following year, the couple sold their Auckland mansion on a two-year settlement of $23.5 million to a little-known Lian Zhong Chen. At the time, the couple planned to downsize to a new home, what was previously built on their tennis court, and added a Sydney apartment. And developer Rob Moore's exclusive hubside block at Bradfield that same year put that into the bargain. So really this is just, uh, they bought their couple three, uh, their apartment three years ago. Sir John Key had business interests in Australia, but in the years since the building has taken shape, those interests have moved to the United States, and so they don't need the new apartment. So it's not a buy and flip but it is, he still stands to make uh, half a million to a million dollars on the transaction, so that's not too bad for uh, buying something off plans. Speaking of uh, buying property, 
Kylie Jenner has, uh, this is the, um, of the Kardashian family, drops $36 million on the Hollywood Hills estate. So quite an outstanding article here on stuff. This is in the entertainment section where they take you inside, inside the house. Now, she's actually a self-made billionaire and uh, but likes investing in property. So Kylie Jenner has expanded her property empire. And this is in the wealthy Holmby Hills neighborhood of Los Angeles. She's only 22 and she spent 36.5 million on the compound, which boasts seven bedrooms and 14 baths. It appears she may have even cut a deal on the purchase. The listing price for the home was a whopping 45 million. The Kylie Cosmetics CEO has yet to confirm reports of the new digs, but the setting for her latest Instagram photo appears to match up perfectly with the home's modern interior design. Says over the years, Kylie's amassed several multi-million dollar homes in the Hidden Hills area, where the majority of her famous family also resides. Her newest piece of property clocks in at 15,350 square feet, and that's her most lavish yet. So they've got a gallery here on uh, quite um, how impressive uh, it really is, <laughs> right down to, to uh, an incredible home, home movie theatre situation. Right, so we'll move along a little here and we'll just talk about um, how things are going with regards the property situation under level three and what, what real estate companies can do and can't do or what you can do if you're selling your home under level three restrictions. So this was on stuff.co.nz and Real Estate Institute Chief Executive Bindi Norwell has come out um, as the Real Estate Institute has with guidance around what can happen with regards to viewings on homes. The Real Estate Institute of New Zealand has today welcomed the news from the Minister of Housing, the Honourable Dr Megan Woods, that private viewings by appointment of homes for sale or rental properties can take place under Alert Level 3 with details and limits to be worked through, which they now uh, finally have been. So members have been sent the detailed guidelines now around uh, buying and selling of properties. But it does mean if you're a purchaser or a seller, you can now have people through your home. But some companies have been finding ways to sell properties anyway, as I mentioned earlier, uh, with the likes of virtual viewings happening online to whittle down the number of people uh, that need to go through a property for sale or rent to those who are the most keen. So thousands of people around the country who have, who have been in limbo over the past few weeks can now move forward with their property transactions, says uh, Bindi Norwell. And for those individuals who have been unable to conduct pre-settlement inspections during Level 4 lockdown period and have been paying hundreds and, or thousands of dollars in bridging finance each week, today's announcement will come as a big relief. And additionally, for the hundreds of tenants around the country who have been waiting to inspect a rental property so they have somewhere to live, this will be much welcomed news. The same is true for landlords all across the country who have empty rental properties and are desperate for some income in order to pay their mortgage. Real estate services are critical to New Zealand economy and account for approximately 13% of New Zealand's gross domestic product. And as uh, New Zealand navigates the effects of COVID-19, the professionally managed facilitation of property sales and purchases will be key to confidence and well-being and will help minimise the impact of the pandemic on the economy, according to the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand. So moving on uh, from that, you can expect that if you are looking at uh, properties with regards to um, the, with a residential salesperson, uh, it is entirely uh, possible that you can do that now, which is good news and, uh, and similar for rentals. So on that theme, uh, the rental market is showing signs of life again, according to Good Returns. Uh, I've personally worked through level four with regards um, showing people rental properties, et cetera, virtually, that is using 3D models and so forth. And uh, really the activity, there is quite a lot of activity there with regards to the market still. But this article that came out about a week ago says the latest Trade Me Rental price index is out today it covers March, which was following the same upward trend seen in previous months, with the national median weekly rent up 3% year on year to 510. Now, for those of you who live in Palmerston North, might be interested to know that that increase in Palmerston North was 14% in one year. 
the head of trade me property, Nigel Jeffrey, says the rental market was looking very robust and landlords were in the driver's seat with a lot of demand and not enough supply. But the government's announcement of the COVID-19 lockdown in late March brought the rental market to a halt, he said. The things will be uh, really picking up now. We expect inquiries to, to continue um, and to increase. Ho uh, prior to the lockdown, we, there was um, many people turning up to property viewings. Uh, this is just going to have to be managed a little bit differently now uh, during level three. So I'll just have a look here through the articles as well. Another thing that's come through uh, recently and snuck through under might have been unnoticed given the the gravity of the news related to COVID-19 is the changes to ring fencing rental losses has come in. So then revenue is reminding landlords they can no longer offset residential rental property deductions against their other income. So this is often referred to as ring fencing rental losses. Deductions residential properties are a ring fence. They can only be used against the income from that property. So each property is on its own merits. Whereas before, if you made a loss on a rental property on paper, you could offset that against your income to pay less tax. So that's been taken away to try and make rental investing less appealing. This will also actually mean that areas like uh, Wanganui, Manawatu uh, will be a much more attractive because they have got properties that can uh, be very close to sustaining themselves in terms of um, not running at a loss. So good news for Manawatu Wanganui around that. So from the 2019-2020 income year, the new, new ring fencing rules people means people cannot use the rental losses to offset their other income like salary and wages. Under the rules, landlords can only claim deductions up to the amount of income they earn for the rental properties for each year. And they must carry forward deductions over that amount, but they can use them to offset rental income in future income years. So it's running it more like an, each one like an individual business. And the rules apply in general, no matter whether it's held in a partnership, trust or company. And all rental property owners who run their rental properties at a loss will be affected, including the so-called mum and dad type investors with one or two rental properties, as well as bigger players with a larger portfolio. So uh, interesting there. There are a couple of exceptions and you can always get advice from an accountant on that uh, should you need to. So moving along, a little bit of level three guidance for landlords and tenants. So what's changing at alert level three? Tenants are allowed to move to a new house and moving companies will be able to help tenants. Movers will have to adhere to physical distancing rules and should keep records for contact tracing purposes. Routine inspections of rental properties cannot take place unless it's in a emergency situation such as a landlord needing to confirm that emergency maintenance is required. Maintenance can only occur in emergencies or with tenant approval. This might include plumbers, electricians or tradespeople who can work on and inside rental properties. We recommend landlords arrange for professional services to clean or undertake maintenance of their vacant rental property. This is off the Tenancy Services website. Uh, open homes where multiple people view a property cannot take place. In-person viewings for rental properties can take place under Alert Level 3 with some restrictions. If the property is tenanted, landlords will need approval from the tenants and viewing should only occur when the tenants are not in the property. During viewings, physical distance should be maintained and contact with surfaces kept at a minimum. Anything that is touched should be wiped with disinfectant. In-person viewings should be limited to two per day to minimise the impact on the tenants. That's some of the guidelines from the tenancy services uh, with regards uh, your ability to be able to show uh, properties to people. And so there's plenty of articles that are available on tenancy.govt.nz or hud.govt.nz who have got great resources around all those questions as things change from level four to level three. So the main ones are that you're able to move and you're now able to actually physically go to view properties as well. And that's all we've got time for this week. This has been Property Matters here with Greg Watson. It's been lovely having your company. Wishing you all the well under level three. Uh, take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. And I look forward to catching up with you here again next week on mpr.nz. 
or alternatively, where all good blogcasts are found. This is the Property, Manage Property Matters radio show. Thanks for listening.